When we pick up animals for Emerald Scales, which if you don't know is our site where we sell animals, we get animals from all over the place, from the weirdest places and the weirdest people. Um, and we usually film a lot of the pickups, but we never really finish filming. We just like shoot random stuff and then can't turn into a video. So it's 2 a.m. and I have all this footage. So I'm gonna try and edit it into a vlog. Uh. <laughs> okay, we are on our way to pick up two new animals. Uh, we you, we haven't really been filming picking up animals for animal scales, but here we are. Uh, these are are these the largest animals for animal scales that we picked up so far? Yeah, definitely. The van is perfectly packed right to the brim of every door with uh, some interesting makeshift enclosures, which they work. The animals are healthy, which you'll see they're right behind me. So uh, we did it. It's really interesting that all the different people you meet, you know, in the reptile community. So this guy was like the most makeshift guy you'd ever meet. Like he has an enclosure made out of a sink and everything. But at the same time, his animals look super healthy. It's just weird, different styles of keeping. I can't say I agree with all of them or if I agree with how makeshift it was, but there's no design that is, that is animals are healthy, so. Hello, sir. You wanna kill me? Oh, he's heavier than he looks, actually. This is the male jungle carpet here. Um, I guess when you hear six feet, I imagine bigger, but he is definitely long. I'm just, I guess he's just seen the larger boa. I don't know, that's some pretty good length though. Yeah. He's exactly as thick as my arm, how great is that? Don't buy it, Alex, don't buy me. <laughs> Testing audio. Yeah, that's good. Hey, how's it going? We got some somewhat emerald colored animals here that will not be for sale, unfortunately, and or fortunately. <laughs> and he killed my mouse, it's the wrong type of mouse. Funny. These are a pair of jungle carpet pythons. Uh, if you remember, we had a small little jungle carpet python on the site for a long time, and he finally sold, and it was funny. A few days before he got shipped off, we picked up these two, who happened to be his parents. These guys are each about six feet, if not maybe a little bit longer. So they're, they're, they're decently sized snakes. So, uh, winter's coming in, and that will be the breeding season for these guys, so we need to start prepping them to actually breed. We think we're up for the challenge. Yeah, I'm paranoid keeping eggs alive, but I believe in us. We'll film through it. car shot. Oh. So, we picked up the geckos. We've got four beautiful geckos, two, gecko, two day geckos and two leopard geckos. And now we're headed to Starbucks because it's Starbucks. It's a new type of bottle bed. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, here's all the stuff we brought back. Some nasty looking big gecko enclosures. They, their setups actually don't look that bad. They just look really dirty. And then we'll need some good scrubbing and stuff. Um, but we're not gonna make them sit outside in the heat while we work on scrubbing their enclosures. I like all this stuff though. Cool, random supplies. Oh, hello. You're in there. Oh, okay. Okay. Oh my gosh. Herping 101. You know, I have an old YouTube video on how to catch a lizard. You could watch that if you want. How to catch a green and a light. Observe. <laughs> he 
Just your sock and cover you. You're a blanket. That doesn't make sense out of context. <laughs> so Alex, you've expressed interest in day geckos before. Are you are you tempted? There one of my hesitations was the fact that you can't handle them usually, but I mean you can see how he's doing. The more I get to work with more and more reptiles, the more I'm becoming to think that like those are generalizations. Yeah. And that if you work with I mean, with almost all the reptiles we've worked with that you're quote unquote can't handle, I've been able to handle and actually tame down pretty easily. Well, not easily, but with work. Again, like always, I love orange on any animal, and he's got little orange spots all over him. Does he have orange spots? Yeah. I miss out on so much. It's, all, it's just all green to me. Oh. Okay. That's well. so cool. Can you see that? <laughs> Those big spots on the back? Yeah. They, they just look like a different shade of green. Bright orange. Well, okay. One of us get to enjoy it. <laughs> this cat never likes me. Hi. <laughs> So this is the leopard gecko enclosure. I'm trying to figure out what's going on here. There's like weird dust. I don't even know what that is. Here? Oh, lovely. I have digested mealworm. Bunch of dead. Oh, this is their poop corner. That's what's going on there. <laughs> they didn't clean out in like a week or something. I don't know what they were doing. <laughs> it's more like a month at least. I'm so confused. Hello. Well, the geckos, this is so weird. These enclosures are crap. They're disgusting. But these animals look like super healthy. Okay, these belong to a college student who left for college and needed to rehome all his herbs. I think he just left already, so his mother's been taking care of them. And it's possible they just got kind of really dirty in the small time that his mother was gone, because these animals are in great condition. Gosh, the male's big. Look at that tail, that's gorgeous. Ugh, some stuck shut on that toe we need to get rid of. We've gotten pretty lucky with these uh, enclosure halls and animal halls. It's not only are they really cool animals, but they're worth quite a bit of money along with all the stuff that comes with them. You've got two exoterras here, and then behind that is just a ton of decor and stuff. So nothing live in a way, although it doesn't look as cool. It's relieving because it takes less energy to keep dead plants a lot to, to keep. It's easier to not kill fake plants. I'll figure out some way to kill the fake plants, but um, until then, we can get scrubbing. I have no idea what I'm putting my hand in right now. It's like a mixture of dirt and poop and dead insects that I've like never even seen. That's some nastiness. That one made a burrow. Does that have eggs in there? And there's something in there. It's Buddha. Uh, we're a continuation of the vlog, I guess. I was just editing everything that you just watched, so now why not add a little to it? So it's about like as far away as the charge we have. So we'll see if we survive this one again. Or maybe this is another Get Stranded episode, who knows. So we're trying to understand different boa types because it doesn't make any sense to me because I learned all about Rosie, my boa. I, I tried to learn about all the different types based on after getting her and after her opinions, but now we're trying to figure out what this boa is. And Surprise, this is what we picked up today. Oh, oh I guess it didn't show it. Hey, we got a boa. Not the best husbandry, but could be worse, I guess. He might be stunted. He's two and a half years old. Uh, actually, he might even be older than that. They've, they've had him for two and a half years. They don't know how old he is. Yeah. Um, we'll have to see if he's still at an age where he can keep on growing or if this is what he is, in which case we have like a 20, 30 gallon boa. Regardless, I don't understand subspecies and common names. I don't like them. I just want to enjoy my snakes. The way we got to a charger, so we're charging now. And Wake Tech Community College, shout out to them for being progressive in the world. I just spent $350 and now I have no money. But I have shiny new brakes, come see my shiny new brakes. Look at those fancy new brake pads and those shiny new rotors. Gorgeous. Amazing, in the golden hour sunlight. It's the golden hour, guys. Let's post a selfie. Oh. So I don't usually like coffee, um, but we were at the Nissan and I went inside and they have one of those coffee shops at the back of the dealership. It's only filled it like halfway and I filled the rest with creamer. Well, let's see if I like it. Smells good. 
I don't know what that tastes like. Can't tell if I don't like coffee or if I just put too much creamer in it. Isn't creamer like the only part? Now it's hot. Ew. <laughs> Why are you sad about this gecko? I love this gecko so much. I don't know, he's just really personable and really pretty. Just a fun gecko. But that's okay. Well, there's many more geckos to enjoy. He's going off to a good home. He's moving on to his second life. This is how we ship our geckos. <laughs> Just kidding. It Don't sue beef. us. So the male is being introduced for the first time to the females. We don't think there's much risk of cannibalism at all because this this pair is already bred together, so this should be fine. Ooh. When photographing day geckos goes not so as planned. From here, it just looks like it's on your hand. <laughs> See my skin? That's some intense pressure. <laughs> oh, oh yeah, okay. there he goes. Now he's just on my hair. <laughs> you stinker. These guys will be available soon. Don't you really want to buy a day gecko now? Oh yeah, I need to turn the feed over to a new family. I guess that's what she needs to fit some eggs in her. What kind of gecko's gonna chill in a room? Yeah. Good boyo. You know what's the coolest thing we learned about? You ever, are you familiar with slime molds? You ever seen when you're walking in the forest and it looks like a yellow patch of like dog vomit? Yeah, that's slime molds. But uh, they've recently been moved out of the kingdom of fungi and they're now a protist. A slime mold is a bunch of amoebas that come together, fuse their membranes together into one giant cell. So they can like, it like they gather around a big food source. So they all like enjoy it and then when they're done they split up again into a bunch of individual amoebas. It's the craziest thing.